All right, in this module, we're going to continue talking about localization. In the previous module, we have talked about different ways to do uh, localization for autonomous vehicle, including uh, visual odometry if you use vision only, including LiDAR and uh, HD map, and including uh, GPS, GNSS and INS system, and then, of course, the view odometry. Um, and in this module, we're going to talk about how do we fuse all these different kind of information together to provide very robust localization results. And we call this technology sensor fusion. And today, there are two mainstream of uh, sensor fusion, the two, two main ways to do sensor fusion. Um, one is based on uh, LiDAR and HD map as the main sensors. The other based on GPS plus the camera as the main sensors. And we're going to discuss these two approaches and the pros and cons of each. So uh, conventionally or traditionally, um, we use LiDAR and HD map because um, all the successful demos uh, at the beginning of this era were done using the LiDAR approach. Uh, for one thing, LiDAR provides very accurate information. And then so that it's much easier to localize your car with uh, the LiDAR devices. And then the sensor fusion pipeline looks as in uh, this slide. First, you have the view of the car to provide view odometry. So the car itself will tell you how much dis distance I have traveled. And then you kind of combine the view odometry and IMU. Uh, like I said before, the IMU device provides angular uh, acceleration, uh, angular velocity, such that you can, uh, using this sensor, you can uh, derive uh, what's the angle of the turn of the car. Uh, if you combine that with the real odometry information, you can kind of derive a very accurate position information. So we call that pipeline as propagation. So you combine real odometry and IMU to derive an initial position. We call that uh, technology propagation. Once we have this propagation update, then we have the GPS coming in to correct any errors you might see. Uh, keep in mind that the, the, the only purpose of GPS is to bound your error to bound your localization error, such that if your GPS accuracy is 2 meters by 2 meters, once you exceed that bound, uh, the GPS will say, hey, you are going too far, uh, your error is too big, you should uh, start with the correct location. But if your GPS provides an accuracy of centimeter level, then uh, the error bound will be much smaller. And then on top of that, we can use LiDAR and HD map. Um, as we discussed before, uh, this provides very accurate uh, localization accuracy. And then since the HD map itself has a lot of uh, semantic information, such as where exactly you are, what's the traffic sign, um, and then what's the traffic light, and so on. So it, it gives you more information for your localization needs. Uh, but the main problem with this approach is the LiDAR device itself uh, is very expensive. For the 64-line uh, LiDAR from Velodyne, for example, it costs over $80,000 to get a piece. And then it's even more expensive to use the HD map since the map, uh, map making process is very expensive. It would take tens of millions of dollars to map a city like, for example, San Jose or Los Angeles and so on. So wh who's going to pay for this cost? And, and uh, how do we ship cars uh, with a manageable cost? That's the main question for the LiDAR approach. But let's see who's using the LiDAR approach. We start with the, on top of this figure is the, the Stanford Junior car, which was a demo car back in 2008. Uh, if you look at the picture on top of it, it has this uh, huge LiDAR device. On the left side is the CMU boss car. It's a similar approach. You, you have several LiDAR devices mounted on top of the vehicle. And at the bottom of it is the Waymo car. Uh, if you see the, the small black uh, uh, item on top of the car, it's again a LiDAR device used to uh, scan the environment to do uh, uh, HD map uh, matching to, in order to localize the device. On the right side, you see the car from Baidu, and on top of it, again, you see this rotating LiDAR device. So that's the example of the LiDAR approach. But then again, uh, it's very expensive, and then the HD map since it needs to be very fresh. Uh, so you need a map a collection car uh, running on the street every, say, once a week. Uh, so that's very expensive operation. And then we can think of, uh, maybe we can uh, use vision, computer vision for localization, and then we rely on the GPS device um, and, and for the initial localization. And then we combine the real autometry and camera information to do the sensor fusion. Uh, so we, we have in this figure, that's the sensor fusion pipeline. The main sensor we rely on for localization here is the GPS and then the camera. Uh, for this camera device, even the high-end ones, uh, such as the ones that are provided by Perseverance, uh, a few thousand US dollars, it's much cheaper 
the Delilah device. And then using this approach, you don't really need to redo the map. Uh, you can use a uh, conventional digital map uh, for mapping. So let's see how this works. So let's look at some examples. Uh, there are two uh, examples for the vision approach. The first one is from Mercedes-Benz. Uh, the project is called Burfa. Uh, they use this car, use vision and GPS to do localization. And then they, they have a demo uh, scenario to travel uh, more than 100 kilometers uh, to make sure that the car is safe and then it's robust. And then for Tesla, it's similar. You, you can see the main sensor for it is actually camera. So the way they do it, for example, for a Burfa is they put a camera on the back of the car such that it takes captures images on the ground, on the floor. Uh, so that uh, what they extract feature points from this uh, surface of the road, and then they do feature matching, basically use the visual automation pipeline uh, to deduce or derive where the car is uh, currently. And then they use GPS to bound the localization area. Using this way, they can um, maneuver the car uh, along the road. And then on top of that, uh, which we will talk about later, they use a lot of perception techniques to recognize which lane the car is currently in so that it can uh, achieve lane level accuracy for uh, car localization. But that really depends on uh, the perception pipeline, which we will talk about in the next module as well. Uh, so it's more than just localization to, to achieve this accuracy. So uh, uh, a bit of discussion. Should we use a computer vision or should we use LiDAR? Uh, my take on that is when, when human drive cars, uh, we use GPS for initial localization and then we use our eyes and brains uh, to localize ourselves on a specific lane. So why can't machines do the same? Uh, so if we can use uh, visual technology to achieve that, it would be much cheaper. Uh, and then it does not really have to change our current infrastructure, such as the digital map and so on. But the problem with that is the algorithm today are not robust enough, still a long way to go to achieve that kind of accuracy. On the other hand, uh, you can um, use LiDAR. Uh, it's proven to be very accurate, very robust. The problem with that is very expensive devices, and then it's even more expensive to maintain the HD map. So uh, it's still open to debate which way we go, but if uh, we want to ship a product, say if we want to ship a autonomous vehicle under say a few uh, tens of thousands of US dollars, then LiDAR is not still not an option today. Although there are, uh, there are talks about uh, different LiDAR companies moving to a much cheaper way to manufacture LiDAR, uh, such as to use the solid state LiDAR. We will see that, uh, how, how that uh, comes out in the next few years and see if we can reduce the cost to a reasonable range such that it can be uh, put into a real car. So yeah, that's, uh, that's the end of this uh, localization module two. Then in the next module, we're gonna talk about perception and how vehicles perceive its environment.